While Republicans in Washington were fighting over the vote for House Speaker, two states faced their own high-stakes tensions as they chose who to lead their state houses. In Ohio, moderate Republicans banded together with Democrats to elect a new speaker, despite the fact that the state's Republican Party endorsed a more hard-right member. And in Pennsylvania, a group of Republicans also agreed to support a Democrat to serve as the state house's speaker, but only if he changed his party affiliation to independent. Now, legislative business is at a standstill as the parties wrangle over control. For more, Karen Kassler is with us. She's State House News Bureau Chief for Ohio Public Radio and TV. And Katie Meyer is a government and politics editor for the nonprofit news outlet Spotlight PA. Welcome to you both. And Karen, at one point during the protracted House Speaker race in Washington, there was talk, short-lived talk, of Democrats and Republicans forming a coalition majority. In Ohio, the parties were able to band together and basically do that. How? Yeah, it actually happened here. And what was interesting is the successful speaker candidate, a man named Jason Stevens, was able to pull together more Democratic votes than Republican votes. He got all 32 Democrats in the Ohio House to vote for him and got 22 Republican votes. The other candidate, who was the speaker-elect coming into this, he had been chosen speaker by the Republican caucus in November, a man named Derek Maron, he got 44 or 43 votes. So he had more Republican votes than the speaker who was elected. And so now there is a real question among these two camps over what's going to happen next. Hmm. And today, the group of folks who backed Derek Maron got together to talk about what they plan to do and if they plan to oppose or try to push forward legislation that maybe Speaker Jason Stevens doesn't want to see. So it's, it's like you said, it's, it's kind of uh, bringing everything to a standstill. Yeah. Well, what, what led the moderates, the moderate Republicans, to push back? I think there were some questions during our lame duck session in December about some of the bills that were proposed that didn't go forward, some that did. There was one night where the House was meeting for 16 hours straight, ended at 6 o'clock in the morning. There were some questions about uh, whether that was something that might have really caused some Republicans to be frustrated. There are Republicans, moderate Republicans, who say that Derek Maron, who was the speaker-elect, did not reach out to them after he won that vote, and they were concerned about that. His supporters, Maron's supporters, say his father was in hospice and dying at the time, and so he didn't have the ability to do much other than try to make phone calls. So there are a lot of hurt feelings all the way around, and Democrats have tried to capitalize on this by teaming up with those more moderate Republicans and voting for Jason Stevens for speaker. What that will do to legislation going forward is really a question. Well, that was my next question for you, in fact. I mean, how does this affect the broader legislative agenda in Ohio such that anybody knows at this point? Democrats said that they worked with Jason Stevens because they feel that he could work with them on issues that they're concerned about, primarily education. Uh, Derek Maron, the speaker they didn't vote for, has shown a lot of support for universal school vouchers, which Democrats oppose. There's also a proposal here that would make it so that voters would have to approve constitutional amendments by 60 percent in Ohio. Right now, it's just a simple majority. Democrats didn't want to see that happen because there are some potential potential ballot issues on reproductive rights and redistricting that they want to see go forward. They say Jason Stevens has agreed to work with them on that. And that, of course, is some of the back and forth among Republicans because they support these things, but they are wondering what Jason Stevens told Democrats about what he will work with them on and how he will actually get that done. Well, let's shift our focus to Pennsylvania now. And Katie Meyer, the Pennsylvania State House is in limbo. Help us understand what happened. Yeah, so this really goes back to November. Um, in that election, the House came away with a razor thin split. So it had been Republican controlled for a decade. Democrats uh, won, of the 203 member chamber, they won 102 seats. So a very, very slim majority. Republicans won 101. But now today, Democrats have three vacancies. One of their members passed away, and two others had to resign to uh, take higher offices. So the Republicans actually have on the floor a functional majority. And so that's going to be temporary. Uh, special elections will probably give Democrats back those seats. But in the meantime, what it's done is create a situation where Republicans have been actually having trouble keeping their caucus together. 
and they were unable to get full support behind one of their own candidates for speaker, a speaker who would probably only serve temporarily. Democrats, meanwhile, weren't able to flip enough Republicans to, you know, vote for their choice of speaker, a Philadelphia Democrat, Joanna McClinton. She's pretty progressive. So what happened instead was a very strange episode last week where uh, Republicans engineered basically a power sharing agreement, but um, not one that's really predicated on moderation. They convinced a Democrat, Mark Rossi, um, who's kind of a backbencher, to uh, run for speaker. And then once he uh, was ex accepting the nomination, Democrats voted for him, and uh, a handful of Republicans did as well. It got him the votes. He announced that he was an independent. Again, this was engineered by Republicans. Democrats knew at some point Democratic leadership, but the rank and file from both parties were totally taken by surprise. Hmm. And uh, hmm. what has happened since has been even more complicated. There was a lot of talk about, uh, you know, bipartisanship getting along, but these are bitterly divided chambers. And so Razi has since refused to, uh, or at least has not committed to switching his party registration, which Republicans said he told them he was going to do. And then the policy at the center of all of this uh, has kind of been thrown into limbo. One of the reasons we're told that Razi took um, this speakership was that he had hopes to avoid a standoff and get a constitutional amendment passed that would basically give uh, sexual assault survivors, people who had been assaulted in childhood, uh, more options to sue even if the statute of limitations is passed. So if he switches his party affiliation, if there's movement on this amendment, I mean, could that break the stalemate? It could. Um, there's, there's a lot of moving parts right now. And what Republicans have said is that they will pass these amendments. They want to pass the amendment. They've passed it before, and that's a whole other story. Um, these are complicated to pass in Pennsylvania, but... Uh, they also want to roll it into a bunch of their own priority amendments, which includes uh, voter identification, um, you know, a new requirement that uh, the state uh, uh, operate election audits, and so things like that. And these are things that Democrats generally oppose. And so now Rossi's in the middle of this. He's not saying too, too much about his own policy preferences, but Democrats have made it really clear they don't want those things. And so all of these are a big question mark. And so moving forward, Katie, how does this affect the legislative agenda in Pennsylvania? I mean, a lot is going to hinge on special elections. They will either happen, one of them's happening in February, two more might happen in February. They also might get delayed, depending on what a court says. These are all like very highly contested things. But uh, I think even when the Democrats are back up to full strength and have, uh, likely if they win those elections and have a very narrow majority, what we're going to see is really tough legislative deadlocks all the time in Pennsylvania, just because, again, this is a narrowly divided body, and they've shown very little indication that they're going to be able to happily work together, you know, with hmm. people crossing the aisle to support certain things. So I think we're in for a lot of standoffs. Katie Meyer of Spotlight PA and Karen Kassler of Ohio Public Radio and Television. Thanks to you both. Thank you.